a while ago, the distributor for Head reached out to me asking if I would be interested in checking out their studio monitors. Now, for those of you who follow me, you know I like a bit of color in my system. In fact, right now, I am also working on bringing a speaker to market. And one of my criteria is it cannot be boring flat. Now, in my head, studio monitors is boring flat. I guess they need to be since people use it for mixing. That is why I turn head down politely. Now, however, one day I saw a Facebook post from Soundstage, Doug, and it was a photo of this awesome looking speaker. Now, you can imagine my shock when I learned that this is a head speaker. Man, I hope I pronounced it right. And in my book, if a company can build a speaker taller than me and cost over 40,000 USD, they know a thing or two about building speakers. Yeah, the Thomas Weir Audiophile Logic. So I messaged the distributor and told them, you know what, on second thought, let me give those speakers a try. Sure, there were two major concerns. One, it uses an AMT tweeter, and I am not a big fan of AMT tweeters. The second concern, which I've already mentioned, was will it sound linear and boring? I like my system with MSG and soya sauce. I don't like neutral sounding systems. So if I did, you know, I would just get a studio monitor. Wait, I am getting a studio monitor. So you can understand my concern. However, once I powered it up, I was like, okay, these are different than the Kef LS 50W, LSX, Totem Can Play, Klipsch Defies, the Triangle Elara speakers. Those are all active speakers I've tried before in a good way. So my audio buddies, today we are going to talk about the head, the head Type 05 MK2 active speaker. So just like 70% of my videos, I'm not getting paid nor am I keeping the speakers after the review. In fact, I have just returned the speaker to the distributor and it cost me gas to drop it off at the 2022 Montreal Audio Show. That is why a big thank you to my Patreons for supporting me. Now, they are displaying it at the Montreal Audio Show, so if you want to go check them out, yeah, it's over there. The head speaker I received was their smaller studio monitor named Type 05 MK2 and a subwoofer called Base08. Now the combo is around 3000-ish USD. Now what you get is a two-way speaker with DSP and ice power amplification rated at two times 100 watts. Now each speaker comes with a five inch woofer and an AMT tweeter. Now rated from around 45 Hertz all the way to 40 kilohertz, now depending on the setting you choose at the back of the speaker, it will deliver impressive details and bass especially you, if you use it on your desk. Now, if you want to use it in a normal listening room like this, then yeah, I highly recommend you pair it with the matching Bass 08 300 watt 8 inch subwoofer. Now, what sets this active speaker apart from the others is that the fact that you can tweak it like no tomorrow. If you look at the back of the speaker, and if you're the type who has a hard time finding the calculator on your cell phone, yeah, you might be intimidated by the nine switches at the back. Now with the amount of fine tuning you can do with these speakers, man, they should have just put a warning label at the back for audiophiles only. Think about it. The reason audiophiles love to mix and match stuff is so they can fine tune the sound. Now if you're the type who loves to dial in the sound, this might be for you. Now for example, the, speaker, the speakers come with port plugs. Now you can seal the ports with the port plugs and then optimize the speaker with a switch at the back. Now which in turn changes the sound of the speakers. The bass is more linear and the top end will accentuate a bit more. Now there are other interesting features such as the linearizer. Man, whoever came up with that name probably is a fan of the movie The Equalizer. Don't bother guessing what it means, just go read the manual. Now, these active speakers only have a power amp built in, so you will still need to connect it to a source, like by XLR, maybe a DAC. Now you can buy an SML cell D1SE DAC, plug it in and be done. Or you can do like me, connect it to a tube DAC, then to a tube preamp, then connect it to the matching sub, then to the speakers. Yes, we audiophiles love to complicate life.
Now, mind you, once you plug it in with a tube preamp, there is more air. So your choice of the front end will affect the sound significantly. So how does it sound? If I listen to it ported. Now I have to be very specific because ported and not ported, there's a big difference. Ported, it does not sound boring and flat. As I mentioned in my past videos, I don't like AMT tweeters. But in this case, there is no hint of dryness. Sure, it might not sparkle like a Focal speaker tweeter, but it sparkles enough for me to be okay with it. And yes, no problem with detail. What I appreciate about the AMT tweeter is that it does not have hard edges. So these speakers have a certain easiness or smoothness to it. Pleasant to listen to. Also, not sure if it's because of the waveguide, it is not as beamy as other AMT tweeters I've heard before. The mid-range is warm and the bass is round. There's a certain richness to it, especially on my desk. Now in my main listening, main listening room, the subwoofer will add depth to the soundstage. And I mean, in a properly treated room, the depth is amazing. Now the soundstage stretches a bit beyond the speakers. Instrument separation is good and I find the dynamic, dynamics just okay. Now the bass driver is not a big driver after all. Now the sub is not a home theater sub. Even ported, it is well controlled, not boomy and quite musical. Now I personally prefer listening to it ported because I like the fatter bass. Now my audio buddy, Mr. Quad, prefers listening to it sealed because things are tighter, there's more clarity, and there's a bit more strength in the upper mid bass. And you know, he's okay with less bass extension. As I always say, a question of taste. So there are two negatives you have to be aware of. If your room is big, you will be pushing these speakers hard to get 85 dB. And I find the top end can be, have a bit too much energy. Now, it is not harsh, but it can be a bit on the forward side. So in my case, I had to make some adjustment with the controls at the back to smoothen it out. Now on my desk, strangely, it was buttery smooth. I could even turn up the brightness and it is no problem. So if you're getting one for a normal listening room, I would say get the bigger Type 07. Another thing I don't like, it takes 30 seconds for it to wake up from sleep. And every time I need to boost the volume of my DAC for the speakers to detect the signal. So let's move on to the positives. Now to help me evaluate it, I have yeah, three of my audio buddies listen to it. Why only three? Usually I have an army. Well, most of my audio buddies were not interested in trying these speakers. You know, audio files and studio monitors, it's like water and oil. They just don't mix. So out of all my audio buddies, only Mr. Quad said yes to bring it home. And I had to hype it up a little bit to get him to take it home. So I dropped it off at his place, but without the subwoofer. Because you know, at my age, you know, I try to avoid bringing heavy, st heavy stuff around. Mr. Quad was like, man, this is gonna sound so boring. But after he tried it, he messaged me, Thomas, I'm gonna drive over to pick up that subwoofer. The speaker surprised him to the point he was willing to come over just to pick up the subwoofer. In short, he said they were coherent and quite musical. As I said, even though it is detailed, it is not as edgy as Metal Dome tweeters, for example. Great musicality and nicely balanced. He actually preferred it over some really highly regarded speakers I recently lent him. The Type 05 sounded clean, precise, rich and non-aggressive. The soundstage with the help of the subwoofer is deep. Mr. DIY, my other audio buddy, dropped by his place to listen and share the same feeling. Mr. Cantor got to hear the bigger Type 07 at the distributor's place. And at the time he had no idea what it was. So later on when I asked him what he thought about that Type 07, the first thing that popped up in his mind, it is pleasant to listen to and how musical they were. When I listen to other active speakers on my desk, and you know, those that I've mentioned before, sounding pleasant is not the first thing that pops up in my mind, like the KEF LS50W, detailed and analytical, or what crosses my mind. I was actually worried there is something wrong with my ears because I was expecting it to sound linear. But I was like, hey man, you know what? There's a bit of MSG with this presentation. I like it. 
but you cannot use it for mixing. But once I close the ports, change the settings, yeah, okay. It now tastes like steamed vegetables instead of fried vegetables. The differences are not subtle. Next, sometimes when I get an active speaker, it is a bit noisy. You know, when you don't play music, there's a, a bit of a hiss and it can be really annoying. That is why some active speakers, I just set them back without a review. The head is quite is quiet, relatively speaking. Finally, as I mentioned before, there's so many adjustments at the back and you know, you should be able to dial it to the sound that you like. And best of all, it is light. Class D, man, it's the future. You know, it's kind of stupid of me to say that because I'm about to bring a tube M to the market. You know, on second thought, forget Class D. So let's conclude the video. The reason I took the time to make a video on this speaker is because one of my goals of this channel is to talk about not too well-known gear and also to find good alternatives. The Kef LS50W is great. I had a blast with it and it's very hard to beat. However, I realized the sound of the Kef LS50W is not for everyone. So this is an interesting alternative because it takes a different path in regards to sound. And the best part is these speakers are sold through dealers, so you can actually go listen to them. Yes, so if you're looking for an active speaker and also you don't want to deal with that synergy problem, right, you know, matching amps, power amps and blah, 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 this can be a good solution. So with that said, yeah, I think that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next time. It's not the